Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hey, how is everyone doing tonight? This was the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion part one. And I was like, oh my goodness, could we have just combined one and two together? Because really, it was a snooze fest. It really was a snooze fest. And uh, nothing really, anything exciting happened, not really. Um, The girls all looked it beautiful, except for their gowns. All of them looked like they were going to the prom. I don't know, it's just a... I wasn't feeling it. The colors were vibrant, and I could understand that part, but they were just all over the place, the dressing. I mean, the faces were beat. And I understand why some of uh, Candy's pictures made her look darker than what she really is. Maybe it was the makeup. I'm not really sure. But while we got them two on uh, the screen, let's just talk about Sheree having, uh, what do you call it? Selective amnesia when it comes to shading, shading, and then shading candy with Marlo. But she going to say she did not do anything. She, she just felt that candy was using her for clickbait. I'm like, Sheree, <laughs> Sheree. She by Sheree don't pay, girl. Sit your behind down. Because if we were to have followed you after the uh, last episode aired, we would have saw a lot of flaws and fakeness and fraudulent stuff that you were doing with she by, she gained pay, okay? There was no fashions. There was no accessories. There were nothing. But you said people actually bought stuff online then they should have had their stuff by now to be able to come on anybody's platform or their own platform and share with us what were the goods looking like did you like what you paid for that ah sheree 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 (laughs) sheree it seems to me that drusador was right about you not paying nobody because you just can't sit up there and have somebody do work for you and then y'all negotiate a price and they finish the job but to your specification that probably wasn't written in any other negotiation far as getting the contract signed on what you wanted the said person to do for you and the said cost you probably had went and picked that Something they weren't even told that you wanted in the particular item you were having them make up for you. And just to put it short, and sweet Sheree, you ain't paid that man who helped you with your ensembles for that particular fashion show. You haven't paid Drew Sedora for the party that you and her had come to agreement on that y'all were having for Marlo and Kenya. And people still said, to this day, you don't pay them contractors and stuff. So, and Kenya made an interesting point. Just because you don't like a job that a person did, you still have to pay them. Okay? Because if you had a problem, wasn't you watching how the job you wanted this particular person to do for you weren't you watching every step of the event that was going on so you could have said no this is not looking what I had specifically wanted you to do this is what we agreed upon why is it looking like this 
you know, and then that was your opportunity to say, stop construction, stop everything. I don't want you to do anything else and just pay them for what they did. But you can't go around all willy-nilly talking about if they didn't do the job correctly, if they didn't do the job to my specification, even though I did agree to pay them, I'm not going to pay them. No, Sheree, that's not what we do. It's called we pay them unless they did something totally not what you told them to do like it's not matching what y'all had agreed upon and that's more so like say the price factor they said they were going to build you a house of 42 square feet and this is what it was going to cost they built the house but it was 50 something thousand okay or 70 something thousand and they didn't tell you anything regarding what the add-ons were as they were going along or the additional stuff that was needed to complete the job. You had no knowledge of it. They brought you nothing uh, as uh, we call it another invoice or statements or some type of awareness that this job is being more than what I contracted and told you the price would be. Then you have a lead way to say, no, I'm not going to pay you for that. And then it would be like water under the bridge. You know, you can take them to court or whatever. And the only thing the judge is going to look at is what's written down on the paper. He's not going to look at any necessarily anything you say verbally. Everything needs to be right, written down. And both parties agreed of this is the contract we're going to hear by. And the jobs gets taken care of. But Sheree, that's, you know, you on the facility or on the mind frame of... If they don't do it to your liking, you're, you know, you are not going to pay them. That's not how the world works, Sheree. That's just not how the world works. Okay, and Kenya was pretty much trying to tell you that as well. But then Sheree called herself getting on Candy about Candy and making her a uh, subject topic every week on her Speak On It uh, segment. And I'm like, Sheree, you living in a fantasy world. No, ma'am, uh, I can't testify because I tend to uh, watch, speak on it sometimes on Candace's channel when I have time. And she don't make you the center of every particular week as somebody she wants to talk about. No, 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 no. So you got that really majorly wrong. And you came to the conclusion that... Uh, you didn't throw shade at candy you didn't say anything about candy you weren't talking about candy and of course that was selective amnesia once again and even andy cohen had to tell you boo yes you did talk about candy and she said but no that was through our confessionals when i was talking to you and i'm like no 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 don't deflect don't navigate from the question at hand you did what you did and you, sh you, it's like we're talking to a, a person that hasn't hasn't been on the show before at all. You've been on the show, Sheree. You know what it details. I mean, if you got some memory problems, you need to be really actually seeking a physician's help because you really have very much so selective amnesia or what you want to remember and what actually happened. Okay. And you're trying to turn it into another narrative. Because I'm telling you, baby, they're going to be on your ass. Okay? They're going to be on your ass about these fashions that never uh, materialized, I should say. After the fashion show. After the finale of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. What in the hell happened, Sheree? <sighs> but from my understanding, all you guys got letters to come back. So we're going to be looking at you all again. And like I said, you're still at status quo. You're still lying. You're still uh, deflecting. You're still hating. So we're just going to leave that with you. Because you didn't really give us anything else to talk about for part one. Now we go on to Drusador. Drusador, Drusador, Drusador. Hmm, I didn't like Drew at first, y'all, but she has definitely grown on me to where I have to say, okay, she needs to have a standard peach. She needs to have a standard peach, you know. We can see her a couple of, a few more, several more uh, seasons. I can see her because she's definitely solidified herself on handling herself a little bit better this season than what was previously displayed. 
in the past seasons. Um, she knows how to get under your skin, and she does a very good job when it comes to um, Sheree and um, Bop, 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 um, Sanya, Sanya. Uh, yeah, she still gets under uh, Sanya's skin because, again, you can't come for somebody when you're not prepared. And again, once again, once again, once again, Sonya always come unprepared. But she has a lot of negative energy that she brings with her. Like, nobody on the show other than Drew got on her nerves. She tried to say Drew had a fictitious, fake type of uh, business she was into with another um, what do you call it, persons, but it really was the other person's business, she just was using Drew's face and connection with a higher platform to get her business out there, so you could call them partnership, I'm not really sure, but uh, I think Drew's claiming more of the woman's company than what she should be claiming because she's really just the spokesperson she's the voice she's the look she's the image of what uh her partner wants um drew to attain by you know her being on the real housewives of atlanta and her having some maybe hollywood connections that can get her fitness um business off the ground okay it's where you eat right properly you you manage your food with um we call it pre-made meals and you exercise and you drink plenty of water so and i guess you just have uh people helping you um as you're going through your journey of weight loss where you can call them up and they can get you back together kind of sort of like a um what do you call it uh like alcohol anonymous but it's more so get fit anonymous when you finna really do some things that can cause or deter weight gain weight loss for you uh so yeah they were trying to still say uh what sonya was really trying to say that it was just it's not her business you know it's drew's just faking the phone trying to be with the rest of the ladies but you know then Annie had said something about well did you not uh choose Kenya and Candy uh, with the point being they have a larger following of people uh, that could probably be interested in your product um, if you use them appropriately um, and she was saying Sonny was saying no that wasn't it it was she just felt comfortable and she felt more tuned in to Kenya and Candy uh, they made her feel more welcome within the group and she pretty much felt welcomed by everybody except for drew and i'm like uh yeah i don't know where that's coming from because i thought they were good when the show ended especially on uh charade's uh, uh fashion show everybody seemed like they was in tune with one another and they had forgiven each other for the trespasses that they had made against one another but i guess sonya after looking back at the whole season she just saw how manipulative uh, Drew was. But I'm like, okay. Now, everybody else got on your nerves. Kenya buried you uh, in the sand when you came for her. And she really didn't have a lot to give when she did that. Because she usually go harder on people. That's why they call her the Slay Assassin. Assassin. But uh, you tried it with Kenya. You didn't get nowhere. You didn't even get in the driveway, really. You know, most people get a chance to get up in her house or in her space to be able to get her together. But you didn't get past the driveway. All right. You couldn't even turn your car in her driveway. Uh, you were no match, uh, Sonya, for Kenya. And let me see. Sonya, Sonya, Sonya. What else we got to say? Really, was there anything um, more to say about Sonya uh, other than... And it was asking, do you think you and Drew can mend your fences, this, that, and the third? And it didn't look like neither one of them wanted to. Sonya looked like she was all mad and stuff. But all that, pop, 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 pop. I'm so sick of that shit. I'm like, girl, don't do that in Georgia. We don't want to hear that. Because it's like you bringing out guns. So, um, yeah. 
I would still like to see Sonya uh, grow. Because uh, Drew definitely has gotten her growth in. And she just tar targeted uh, Drew and wanted to ride as far as she could. But even Drew was making her look stupid uh, with some of the things. And you know, Drew is a trained actor. So actress, so she could turn on the charm in a minute's notice, and you wouldn't even know she's doing it. Cause I'm still trying to figure out how she can get your goat, and you be raising your boys, and this, that, and the third. And Drew still got the same tone throughout the whole conversation. But uh, yeah, that's all we can talk about about uh, Sonya. Then we got Marlo. Ah, uh, well, let's talk about Kenya since we're on her picture. Well, Kenya, that dress is horrible looking. I mean, like, all the dresses were kind of not, I wasn't favoring the dresses. I think I like the color more than anything else. But they slayed in those dresses. You know what I'm saying? But those right there, it's like every last one of them was going to their junior, senior prom. Yeah, that's, yeah. But anyway, uh, well, we can go back and talk about, well, no, we talked about them too. Drew has solidified herself. I just wish she would have gotten a break. I wish she hadn't gotten uh, Fatoum out of the picture. Because Fatoum was right up there with Drew's energy. And she was coming for Drew. And that was a more formidable opponent than Drew and Sonya. But as we could see, um, Drew still had her little tricks. Talking about the dog treats she had bought. And how uh, Therese's friend Fatoum is uh, a character in herself and she's you know uh she's like gum underneath her shoe so she's pe telling um you know so i mean um what's her name charay that fatoon was a chihuahua <laughs> i was like damn you drew damn you drew okay but like i said fatoon could handle drew sonya cannot not during this season and uh, let me see. Uh, I guess that's all we can say about uh, Drew and um, Sonya. Let's talk about Candy. Um, Candy was trying to get Sheree straight about her using her as clickbait or a, a point of interest to talk about on her speak on it and Candy was saying, baby, I don't need you for clickbait. And she's definitely right. You wouldn't want to be. Girl, please. <laughs> we ain't going to even go into uh, the significance you don't play a part in bringing candy views. She has enough talent on her own to bring the views. And if she needed more, she can get her uh, aunts and her mama to come over. That can make the views go through the roof. All right. So. Uh, you know, and sure, I mean, in Candace's defense, she was overly too nice to uh, Sheree and Marlo. But they said that's her Achilles heel, that's her downfall, because she gives people chances. Regardless if they're dogging her out, she, you know, looks the other way. Which, you know, in a sense, are you your sister's keeper? I mean, are you your brother's keeper? Yes, you are. But sometimes you have to cut the cord on some people when you know... There's just no good in them. They may try or it seems. They project it. But it's just no good in them. So um, we didn't see Candy get on Marlo as much. Not this uh, first uh, part of the reunion. She was pretty much trying to tell Sheree where she went wrong. Trying to talk about her. When she trying to flip the script and say Candy was talking about her so it really wasn't anything there candy just made it straight and plainly known that no baby you talked about me so you talked about me i'm gonna come talk about you but don't tell me how to come back at you so it's like she's kind of picking up kenya's little um um saying she does when you shower you shower women you shower shots at her don't think she's going to come back with the same energy. It's going to be triple that energy. But you asked for it. You see what I'm saying? So it's like Kenya always says, don't come for her or the, unless she twirls for you to don't come for her. Okay. That's something similar to that. Um, let me see. We're going to move on to uh, Marlo. Oh, Marlo, Marlo, Marlo. Girl, I think everybody would need a drink. 
to try to get in your world and try to uh uh-uh, uh to get on your head because uh, we so tired we have all gotten exhausted you have made the fans become exhausted with the over exaggeration you give every single time you do something and instead of you standing in your own shit you're gonna blame it on well i went to foster care i've been in so many homes i mean we don't took the violin and the string from you girl because we just don't want to hear it you in your damn near late 30s still talking about something that happened to you long time ago and you have the resources to talk to somebody professional about what's going on but you choose not to use it you still choose to abuse your co-workers probably your real friends because you still so stuck on well i didn't have a mama i didn't have a daddy and i'm like girl cry me a river did you have anybody out there that you admired that you could have like watch them go through life and maybe you could have asked them some questions on how you move in this direction what i mean was nini that part for you that's why you don't come out and talk about nini was she your mentor because baby you got the wrong mentor she's gonna show you how to jump off a cliff but she's gonna not jump but she's gonna have you jump so no nini is not a good person to be sitting there trying to say how you can get business or how you can get jobs and then it end up with what Nini's going through now. Okay? So, no, baby. You need Bernice King. You know, you can look her up and see if she has any time for you and maybe she could be a mentor person for you if you're really trying to change, if you're really trying to be the best person you can be for us, your character and your morals. But you can't keep coming thinking you're going to, you know, say bad things about the girls, especially Kenya and Candy, and don't think you're going to get some blowback. I mean, like, you seem like you're terribly damaged because you've been talking about your mother in not a favorable sense in this reunion and she just came down here and gave you some time and sometimes our parents can't give us what we feel we need because they were never shown that type of love that you're suggesting that they should give you marlo so hopefully you come with something else other than the parenting of your nephews and the lackluster type of childhood you had i mean is it something else of substance because we need to just put you back as a friend of the show if you don't want to be letting us look at your life and let us see what you do to make a living well we too much don't have any reason for you to be there not as a peach holder but you know if that's your reward for bringing major drama uh of the negative on the two main characters which is kenya and candy then i guess you've done your job you served your job well if that's the assignment they gave you to project on us for our viewing pleasure um let's see here who we got left here kenya 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 more hair care <laughs> Only thing I can say, you do do what you need to do for your many, many jobs. When it's time to use a platform to sell, to market your brand, you do a hell of a job doing that. Okay, same thing with Candy. Um, You got a big-ass platform such as this, you might well use it uh, to your best energies because you're not promised to be on here maybe a couple of years down the road i don't know how long real housewives of atlanta will stay on tv you know because everything has this wrap-up point so uh glad to see you using your advertisement dollars through the real housewives of atlanta for your kenya more hair care and i think they said if i'm not mistaken she got introduced to having 57 stores to have her project uh, not project but her product in their stores for selling because you know cvs is very well known like mcdonald's okay 
When you see the Golden Arches, you know you're at McDonald's deal. When you see CVS Pharmacy, you think of hair products. You think about, um, um, what, what do you call it, health care uh, type things like headache medicine or beauty products or uh, photo uh, making, uh, what do you call it, printing or whatever. But, yeah, she landed a very big, nice contract uh, with CVS. Hopefully, you know, they'll be, you know, they'll be around for a long time. But I do hear that they are going to be closing some of their stores. So hopefully that won't affect Kenya's brand by her, by the stores being closed. Won't help her, won't hurt her brand for people being able to come to CVS and buy her product. Okay, and candy, candy, candy girl, what can we say, what can we say, you need to be very uh, diligent in keeping both your restaurant establishments safe for your um, workers as well as your patrons or your guests to come and enjoy good meals at your establishments, okay, we don't need to have uh, Todd saying no generator, no cops. No, no, no. We still need the generator and we still need police presence so it'll deter certain people coming in your establishment, okay? That you don't want. The, the undesirable ones I'm talking about. Um, the whole thing with your mom and Todd, that's all. We're beating a dead horse right there, okay? We're definitely beating a dead horse. You see them both as very important people in your life that you want to keep happy. But one is going to suffer and the other one is not. Now, which one you choose, that's your choosing. Because I'm not walking in your shoes. I'm only looking on, looking at the window. I'm outside looking at the window trying to figure everything out and trying to use my best logical um, opinions on what's going on versus... Well, I, I, that's an additional, you coming out and telling us from your own mouth that uh, you don't think your mom and Todd are going to ever get together and be on the same accord. Not when it comes to money. And you pretty much got that hit. You hit the nail on the, what, handle or handle on the, y'all know where I'm going with it. Um, so that could be a problem. Then it could not be a problem for you. It just depends on how Todd response to the things that you put him in now um yeah where in the bible it does say you're supposed to leave your family and cling on to your spouse okay that's what it's supposed to be happening but i you know y'all have such an open relationship i can't even believe that you know you really i know you know about the lord but i don't think you practice it enough to understand the boundaries that need to be set when it comes to Todd and your mom you know what I'm saying can't be everybody's friend but your mom got to understand that you're married and you have to look at things a little bit different but she's gonna be good you know what I'm saying there ain't nothing that you, I was gonna give you gonna stop me from giving you what I think you deserve you know you need to really uh and same thing for Riley you need to tell her the same thing I got y'all y'all good uh but it seems like they don't have that promise from you that you're not going to let love just sway your opinion and leave them out in the dark somewhere okay because I really do believe uh, Mama Joyce have come to understand Todd now I say that very lightly <laughs> but it's just when Todd has to come with money making ideas and he influences your daughter to go along with these ideas whether they be plentiful fruitful or they just be a damn right bust um i think your mom just you know she don't want you to be in a situation where you're giving one let me see you're giving like 98 percent and todd's only giving the other percentage so i don't know because you've been fighting with this whole beast since the induction of your marriage and lord knows y'all have definitely fared you know well because you're still together 
but I don't know if that's by contractual obligation in your prenup, you know, how y'all had to stay so many years for him to get this, that, and the third, if you still make more money than him, you know, I, I just don't know how that, that table turned, because it seems like men are supposed to take care of women, but I do understand women have definitely infiltrated every type of work out there, and some work that we really would thought only men would take part of, like construction, like architectural, um, doctors, lawyers, you know, things like that, that we were trained to think, you know, this is what a man do for us, a profession, and this is what a woman does. But now the lines are definitely murked up or very cloudy because women are doing their darn thing. They in some of everything. I don't think it's not a career choice out there that a woman has infiltrated and done very, very well far as um assuming that position i mean think about any position that you think of even fishing and catching you know fish you know fishermen you still got women out there you think about um changing a tire doing some type of automotive uh fixing you got women in there uh construction um you got women in there electricians i mean the, the whole gamut thing can go on and on and on women are there so they are women hear them roar so men have to understand that to a certain degree and Todd said he understands it he knows he's not the brand you know he's just damn putting out his own self i like Todd, little Timmy, little timmy Todd talk let's not go there we pull, we pull you up. You know what I'm saying? We want you to do you. But right now, you think it's just best for Candy to be the, the front runner. Because everybody knows her. Everybody loves her. And she's going to make it right on any project she work on because of her name and her um, workability, uh, her likability, and, you know, the uh, work she puts in. You know, she's 100% in in any project she works on, and they know they're going to get that type of ethics that's going to come with Candid. Even though Todd is telling her to do certain things, and they're generating money, streams, and stuff of that nature, but, you know, he said that Candid didn't have that outlook on bringing these different things to the table. A DJ A1 had said that. So, uh, you got to get Todd credit where credit is due. Um, but I don't know what the end all be, would be if she died today, what would happen to her fortune. You know, I think the waters are very, very, very murky, and Candy needs to clear them up and just stand in her shit, regardless of who she's leaving what and how much percentage, you know. At least everybody know, and they can work on that. And, uh, you know, maybe Todd will probably feel salty about who's getting what, but, I mean, it's her money. You know what I'm saying? You were in the ride. You you're living good. You eating good, like as you say, and uh, you making moves. So everybody should be 100% happy with knowing up front what they're getting, and don't try to talk somebody out of it because you feel well they didn't do this, they didn't do that, but I did this. You you know that's when the things get crazy. But um, yeah, I think that was it for part one. Nothing truly exciting. Um, so I have to, um, uh, lean on Kenya's understanding when she said it was mild. I hope she ain't saying all three parts are mild. Because then I might don't watch it. Just catch up and see what other people saying. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, they took an hour of my time and I really didn't get but 15 minutes of commentary that I could give. I just kind of stretched it out because I was trying to give everybody a fair shake. You know? Because I'm like that. I'm non-biased. I... You know, if you fucking up, I'm going to pretty much tell you, you know, or talk about you. Uh, if you're doing good, I'm going to tell you you did good, you know. Just like, I ain't like Todd. I ain't like Todd. But see, Todd is growing on me. Especially, he do, he needs to do more speak on it. So we can understand where he's coming from. Because when he's being taped uh, with the Real Housewives of Atlanta, they're going to edit and cut out and, you know, do all that. But with, you know, speak on it. Candy don't cut out anything. It's just raw, uncut, full-fledged what this person said, and that's how they felt about it. But, you know, when you're on Real Housewives of Atlanta, they edit stuff. 
and sometimes they edit you in a bad light where you're saying this, that, and the third, and it's it's, it's trash, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, we don't know the backstory of how y'all got up to that point, but they cut that out. They just want to make you look a certain way. So, understand that, got it good. But uh, one thing I want Sonya to do is stop trying to pick on Drew, uh, stop trying to make Drew her storyline, because she's going to end up being like uh cynthia somebody we don't want to see we really don't want to hear of i'm almost like um kim zozia said just uh, sit down stay looking cute but don't say anything and that's pretty much where we're going to go with sonya she don't straighten up and find her voice in these group of women you know because um who said she flip flop so who said she flip flop was that Sheree or was that Sonya? Who did they say it flip flop a lot? Was it uh, Sheree or Sonya? Yeah, I thought so. It was Sonya. She's been deemed the flip flopper. She just don't know who to be around and, and who to tell her truth to and who she can trust. And I keep telling them, like, they ain't listening to me. These are your coworkers, okay? They're not your friends. Uh... They will make a moment out of anything and bring it on TV and hurt your feelings. So that's what Sonya has got to learn. Drew has definitely learned her place. Um, and, you know, I think she kind of took Portia's place, really. But uh, I'm liking Drew. I didn't like her at first, but I'm liking her. And like I said, I wasn't really too thrilled about Todd. But when he did that speak on it, he made some valid good points. And I had to say, okay, okay, you holding her down and... You're saying you're comfortable with her being out on the forefront, but you're really not. But I know you're looking at what's bringing money in. You're looking at the brand. And the brand is not you at this time. It is your wife. And he has uh, accepted the assignment that he's going to take the back road. He's going to be in the background so everybody can win. Now, I thought that was admirable of him saying that. Because, you know, half the time you can't have two people, you know, uh, making it and making it do what it do. Because somebody's going to hate one or the other or they're going to de uh, demote or diminish the contributions that that person is making. I didn't make the rules, but that's pretty much how it goes with two people that can do the darn thing. Sometimes it's a easy fit, like a hand in glove, and sometimes it's like oil and water. They don't mix, but the job gets done. And that's what I kind of see what is uh, happening, because Todd only gets mad when Mama Joyce get into their business. And as we all can see, Mama Joyce ain't going nowhere, and Todd ain't going nowhere. So it's best to love your foe <laughs> than to hate them the rest of your days on this earth because you give me all self blood pressure problems and, you know, unhappiness. And that's going to cause an ulcer for somebody. Hopefully it's not candy, but she is carrying a lot on her plate. We always have to keep her in prayer and the rest of the, the whole cast, too, because we really never know what really is going on in their lives. You know what I'm saying? We can only speculate by what they say and how they move in these streets out here. But um, hopefully they'll get it together before uh, someone dies. You know what I'm saying? You don't want unfinished business. So, Candy, hopefully you can get that squared out work through and y'all can move on to just being happy and enjoying life and enjoying the family as well now that was a cute look for the women and when they were in that like silver that's you know that's so uh what do you call it uh promise like y'all still in high school and shit i didn't like that look and i'm like did the women have to buy their own gowns this time they didn't get no stipend for that i mean they had to do their own promotion because the one that they did do that um bravo had set out for them they didn't like that and they wanted bravo to step it up so the women had to invest in themselves uh to make their promotion pictures look uh really fly that's where the white uh came in that porch with all of them in white but i kind of like this crew uh, I don't think we really need to add on uh, for season 15 unless they're trying to bring a friend to the show. And I think it's Monietta, but I want to hear a lot from Heath, her husband, because he seems like he is a character. 
But I'm just afraid that they get Monique in there or Monietta in there. And it's going to be like a Cynthia thing. And we damn sure don't need no another Cynthia. We don't want her on the boat. We don't want her to even think about coming where she's going to be playing both sides. Okay, and then at the end of all things, when one person needs to be right, or one group of women need to be right, Cynthia won't be able to make, or Mayetta wouldn't be able to make that decision. Same as Cynthia. I mean, we already got Candy, and Candy, you know, you have to get her riled up for her to produce what we need her to produce. And I damn sure say uh, Marlo Hampton did that shit. She did. She was sparking just everything between Candy and King, Candy and King. But at the same damn time, she told me, but I love y'all. And I, I, I respect y'all. I'm like, oh, come on, Marlo. That has driven enough, okay? We had to take the drill out and put it away. Because you were just doing too much. And then you go, oh, po, woe is me and shit. I don't know about want to hear that. We don't hear that now. Because too many people don't went through worse than what you're saying you went through. Okay, and they still know how to show up and show out and not offend people. Don't hit below the belt, you know, type of antics. But that's all I got, y'all, for the uh, first part of the reunion of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And uh, that damn charade. I don't even want to talk about it no more. Let me just cut the camera off. But I'll see y'all next time, guys. Bye-bye.